And we also have this new team from the CDC, the Center for Forecasting and Outbreak Analytics. And a lot of this uh, is trying to look into the future, but really do it data driven and hopefully communicate effectively. I think this is exciting. I mean, we all like check the weather right before we go out. You know, maybe we check the pollen count for some of us. Um, it really makes sense um, that, you know, we start looking at what do we need to be thinking about from an infectious disease standpoint. And my hope is that this isn't just about COVID. COVID's here to stay. We're gonna have to make decisions about how we go forward with that reality. Um, but this is not the last um, pathogen, not the last virus that is gonna circulate in our society, probably not the last bacteria. Um, so it makes sense that we actually have, have learned from this and we're putting in place something that will help us going into the future. And when we take a look at, you know, the counts in our area, we see them, you know, going up again. But I guess there's this question now of how real those counts are. The Institute for Health Metrics and Evaluation, you know, estimating that only 7% of positive COVID cases in the U.S. are, are being detected, which means there's actually 14.5 times higher, you know, out there. And that's because so many people are doing those home tests and it's going unreported. How important are those numbers as we go forward? Now, I, I, you know, I thought when you asked me to be on, this was perfect timing relative to the holidays and the rising case numbers. Um, and things are changing. So what we're saying now is, is different than what we said a year ago. Um, those case numbers are certainly going up. Right now, the reported case numbers in New York are higher than they ever were during Delta. And when you add the fact that we're underestimating, we may be actually getting, you know, competing with the, the Omicron rise. Um, but it's different this time. And there's, there's several things that make it different. One is vaccination. If you've been vaccinated, getting a case of COVID is very, very different. About a 90% reduction in a person ending up in hospital. If that risk was 20%, you've dropped it to two. Um, if it was one, boy, you've really dropped it. Um, then we now have early treatments, right? If you and your physician are, are up to date, keeping up with what to do, potentially during those first five days, right? We're about five days after Passover. We're pretty soon going to be five days after Easter. Um, if you test positive, we have therapies, another 90% reduction in ending up in hospital. So, you know, people talk about hospitalizations and deaths as lagging indicators. I'm hoping we're not going to see those hospitalization and deaths because we now have better tools. What about co-infections? You know, if you have a positive flu test, that doesn't rule out COVID, right? You can have both at the same time. You know, it, it's shocking to me that people used to think that. And um, I, I apparently been credited with the first identification of flu Rona, people that had flu and COVID at the same time, uh, which I still think is kind of silly. But it was here on Long Island, right, um, where um, a provider was seeing a family um, and they were high risk for COVID, but the first thing they did was a flu test and, and the flu test was positive. So they started to take off their gear. And I said, stop, what are you doing? Just because they have the flu doesn't mean they don't have COVID. The entire family also had COVID. Um, so we're seeing now a rise in flu cases. And because it's spreading at the same time as COVID, we, um, one of our urgent cares, one of the pro-health urgent cares, 80% of the people with flu also had COVID. So wow. you can certainly have both. And I think it's really critical for everyone to know having a positive flu test does not mean you don't have COVID. Having COVID does not mean you don't have the flu or some other virus at the same time. Um, if a gentleman in the hospital do, not doing well um, has a combination of RSV, respiratory mm -hmm. virus, and COVID. With multiple infections, they often do worse. But how are those hospitalization numbers? I mean, people are the rise in COVID cases, but are we seeing also then the rise in hospitalization now or not so much anymore? Yeah, really, really not so much, fortunately. Um, it is much lower, and I think we, we have a lot of tools and why this is lower. We've got those vaccines. People who are recently infected, a second infection during a window does not look as severe. Um, we've got therapeutics. We're, we're a little safer, I would like to think. Um, but no, I do not think we will ever see March 2020 back here in New York. You know what's interesting? I know you were talking about some of the treatments that are out there, and, and if we take a look at um, Paxlovid, I know that there's there's now this study going on where they're taking a look at people that have long COVID that are taking this antiviral uh, from Pfizer and really having some great results from it. Yeah, I, I'm very excited about that. So long COVID, there's a couple theories, and I'll say the big ones, right, is that the virus is persisting. We haven't gotten it out of the system. That's why we're still feeling crummy. The other is there's an immune dysfunction. Maybe it's a combination of both. Um, but just this past week, I've been working in my role as 
senior infectious disease fellow at United Health Group, working with Survivor Corps, um, and we're planning on uh, trying to coordinate with Pfizer. It'll be up to them. Um, but we want to actually do a proper trial. We're starting to see people who end up with Paxlovid for an, a second or third acute infection feeling better. We really want to see does treating individuals with long COVID with an antiviral, an effective antiviral like Pfizer's Paxlovid, does it resolve those symptoms? So we're very excited to actually find out the answer to that. What about the breath test? Not having to do those nasal swabs anymore. What do you think about that one? I, I, I love that actually. Um, I'm not sure why we're not using beagles and dogs because they're even better than machines. Um, but no, that, that was exciting news. The whole idea that instead of having to stick a, a Q-tip, um, unfortunately people are still putting them pretty deep. Mm. Um, the idea that we could just breathe into a machine and in a matter of just three minutes know the answer, that's exciting. It really is. All right.